I wonder what they had to tell when they got to heaven. I wonder what they had to tell. Because there were other angels up there waiting and wondering what in the world happened when Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came among men. What happened? Oh, I think there must have been real sadness in heaven. Why, they were all asleep, the whole city of the king. They were all asleep. We couldn't even wake them up with our trumpets. We had to go out into the field where the shepherds were watching. They were awake. They were awake. They heard us. I heard an, an alliance preacher say that angels don't sing. I don't know. All our songs talk about angels singing. But the Bible doesn't say that. They talked. They had a message. A very wonderful message. But nobody there to listen to it. Nobody there to be interested. He came unto his own. What a fact. How very wonderful. This entire Old Testament was a preparation for the coming of the king to this earth and was intended to prepare hearts to be ready to receive him. But when he came, there was no form nor comeliness that we should desire him. My goodness, who in the world would have looked for him in a manger? In a manger, in a stable. And I wonder what the angels are going to tell God from this meeting. I just wonder what you know, they, they go around. Sometimes you can almost see them go through the aisles and watching the people going to sleep or, uh, or praising the Lord or something. And, and then they go back to heaven. They hear your testimonies. They're sent forth to minister for those who shall be heirs of salvation. You can be sure that this place is filled with angels. I wonder what they have to tell to the other angels when they get up there. And they say, well, how is it down in Ridgewood? We heard some wonderful things about the Ridgewood Pentecostal Church. We heard how people got saved and uh, how they praised the Lord. How was it tonight at Christmas time? Did, did that old lady testify? Did that girl testify that never opens her mouth except when she yells at others outside? Did she testify at last? The preacher talked to her and uh, encouraged her to say something and... She said, goodness, it would take a miracle to make me give a testimony. Did she testify? And the angel said, oh, heavens, no. No, she was looking at the clock and, and fingering her uh, cultured pearl necklace. And uh, I wonder what the angels have to tell in heaven over this meeting tonight. But I wonder what God the Father thinks of us. I wonder what Jesus Christ thinks of us. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Oh, that's the great tragedy of the ages. He came to you. You are his own. Once you wake up and realize what a wonderful creature you are, what a perfectly marvelous creature you are, David said, I thank you, Lord, because I'm fearfully made. Wonderful are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. And then he doesn't know half of it. He doesn't know one thousandth part of the wonder of creation. How did I come into this world? Where am I going? Why did God allow me to be born into this world? David says, By thee have I been holding up from the womb. You took me out of my mother's bowels. My praise shall forever be of thee. Oh, how fearfully we're made, and we're made for one purpose only, to live unto him, to be filled with him, to be united to the Son of God, hallelujah, to make a throne for him to come and reign by us and through us and let the blessing flow far as the curse is found. Supposing tonight we could say, well, Jesus really has grown wonder more wonderful to me. I know there are those that can say that, and I know how it happened. You can't fool me. I know how it happens that you have grown in grace. And that you're more like Jesus. And that tonight you're more filled with the Holy Ghost. And that tonight you're looking ardently for the coming of Jesus Christ and to be ready for him. And I know why it is that you are purifying yourself even as he is pure. 
God does it for you, and he does it for you because when he comes to you, you receive him. As many as received him. How simple. Why, he comes to everyone. He comes to your heart. He knocks at the door of your heart. And if you let him in, it'll take time. I tell you, it takes time. Now when Christmas time comes around, I think of the days when I worked at my business and from Thanksgiving until Christmas, I was buried alive. I didn't seem to live anymore. I had to work day and night, and these Christmas presents had to be finished by Christmas. They had to be done, and the world demanded it of it. A man came to Mr. Booksbaum, who had a jewelry shop in Chicago, and demanded him to have a necklace made that had to cost one million dollars. Du kannst dir denken, wie sich der gefreut hat. He could fix that up to make it cost a million dollars. <laughs> That's the world. But beloved, he's coming again. And he's coming to gather his elect, his bride, those that have really looked for his coming and have prepared themselves for his coming. And he, he is not slow about coming to us. And I know what's happened in your life if you really know Jesus better tonight than you knew him a year ago. You've been praying a lot. That's very simple. But you have. You've been praying. You've been waiting upon the Lord. You were taking no chance no matter what others do. Others have to spend their time. Otherwise, they have to waste their time. Whatsoever is flesh is flesh. That which is born of the flesh minds the things of the flesh. And when the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight, he means to say we walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. We don't serve the flesh. This flesh is crucified with Christ. But oh, thank God, the Son of God controls. He reigns over my will and over my affections, victorious. And it didn't happen all at once. It happened because when he came, I heard his voice. And I obeyed him with fear and trembling. I went to God. When God convicted me in the meeting, I didn't let it go at that. I didn't go to the ice cream parlor to wash it down. But I went to my prayer closet. I buried my, oh, how many times I buried my face in my pillow and cried out my heart before God and said, oh, my God, my God. Sometimes I'd go home and fast the next day because God had dealt with me. It pays. I tell you, it pays. Jesus Christ is Jesus Christ. And today we don't know him in the flesh. He doesn't come to claim a manger in your heart. But he comes to make your very heart his throne. To make your very body his temple. And I tell you, it pays to pray. I cried and he answered. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him out of all his trouble as many as received him. And who's going to stop you from receiving him, tell me? Who can stop you from receiving him when he is so eager to give himself to you? Our sister says she'd like to have the fullness of the Spirit and I thought of Jesus' word. How much more shall your heavenly Father give? The Holy Ghost to them that ask him. I told you how some years ago when I had to take a trip to India. On the way I became a cripple. It happened right here in the pulpit. <laughs> While I preached, the devil shot a, an arrow at my knee. And I had to sit down. And from that moment on, I was a cripple, and it, it pained. Couldn't bend my knee, and I couldn't walk straight. And when I got to Hawaii, or where was it? Some other place. I got down before God one night, and I said, Now, dear Lord, let me have a little argument with you, please. My father, when he knew that I had an ache or a pain, he went to his library, and he got a doctor book out. And then he got a doctor bottle out, a medicine bottle, Alpenkräuter, uh, Fornis Alpenkräuter. <laughs> Anything to help me. I said, my father would have taken my 
sickness if he could have. That's the kind of earthly father I had. And now Jesus Christ told me that how much more shall your heavenly father give good gifts to them that ask him. Now, Father, here you are. I said, I was fresh. But you know, God loved Jacob and he hated Esau. And he likes it when you come with boldness. And do you know, I was almost scared at the way God answered my prayer and and blew that thing away. I went to bed and I threw my legs around and it didn't hurt. And why? How easy it is to receive him. He's much more eager to give himself to you than you are to have him. But this is life eternal that they might believe on him whom God has sent. God, did you send him to me? Why, certainly no one's going to stop me from receiving him and receiving him like the Bible says. Unto you. Did the choir sing, Unto us a child is born? How happy we are when a child comes into the family. Tiny little thing. But it's your baby. And that baby soon rules the ranch, doesn't he? But now the angel comes and says, It's happened. Unto you. It's personal. Oh, that's what I need. I need a personal Savior. I need a Savior. And he says, unto you is born the Savior. There's only one. But unto me, oh, my Lord and my God, and if you're safe tonight, it's because you didn't turn him aside, but you took him. You accepted him. You realized that you were eternally lost unless you open your heart and open your life and let him come and be your life. That's the gift of God who spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. And beloved, you won't know what I'm talking about unless you've acted upon it. You'll be darkened. That's the horrible thing that happens. Do you know that I said God is here, the Father's here, the angels are here. Do you know that Satan is here too? Jesus says so. He says where the seed is sown on a heart, that's heart, the devil will quickly burn. I had a strange picture yesterday morning. I walked, or Wednesday morning, I walked through the park. And I saw something I hadn't seen, I don't think, ever. I saw a raven. There are lots of crows around here, you know, and cuckoos. But he was a raven, a great big black raven. And a stately raven as if he had come out of Edgar Allan Poe's Eleanor. <laughs> he was walking like a queen across that gulf link. And I thought of that devil that goes about stealing the word of God. But who's going to stop you from having him today and tomorrow and being filled unto you? Oh my God, talk about a gift, Christmas gift that keeps giving. He is a savior. He is the savior who saves. And he is the Christ who baptizes with the Holy Ghost and makes you walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. And he is the Lord promised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, Jesus, I don't know how to reign. And I don't know how to tell you how to reign. You've got to do it yourself. And here I am. Let me be your kingdom. You be my king. And so, beloved, let's make it a practical Christmas. Practical. It doesn't come by itself. It does not. It doesn't come by way of tinsel and by way of uh, Christmas trees and by way of Santa Claus. But it comes by way of earnest, honest to goodness, dealing with God until God deals with you, until Jesus Christ knows the door is open and he moves in. <laughs>